record year for data breaches. Personal customer data was stolen in the attack. More than 31,000 passwords are being shared among cyber criminals online. Your data is compromised. Every click, swipe, and search. Tracked, marketed, sold. Not just once, but again and again, like a digital game of hot potato. Data brokers are the internet's most powerful villains. They know where you live, what meds you take, your late night cravings, and even the type of mattress you sleep on. All of it auctioned off to advertisers, insurers, and who knows who else. And here's the kicker, you never give permission. But in this surveillance circus, a few players claim they can clean up the mess. No, they're not perfect, but maybe they're a first step in fighting back. So who are the data brokers? Think of them as giant vacuum cleaners for personal info. They sweep out public records, loyalty card swipes, app locations, anything that isn't nailed down. They come in five distinctive flavors. First, people search engines. Those are like public dossiers searchable by anyone with a credit card. Second, marketing brokers. Those are like ad tech middlemen who track your tastes better than your diary. Third, financial brokers. Those are credit bureaus like Equifax that leak data yet still sell your score. Fourth, risk mitigation firms, such as background check databases, which landlords and HR rely on. Fifth, health data brokers. Those are collectors of fitness band, pharmacy, and even smart mattress stats. No one protected by the HIPAA. Each file they build on you is thick. Age range, income guess, recent buys, commute route, political lean, maybe even your snack orders at 2 a.m. They package and sell that file on repeat to marketers, insurers, and background check firms. Same data, new buyer. Easy money. Those buyers then plug your profile into ad engines, pricing algorithms, and public search sites, turning everyday clicks into targets, rates, and dossiers you never agreed to. You probably never said yes to this trade. Tiny opt-in boxes hide in long privacy policies, and the word public gets stretched to cover things you assumed were private. You can ask the brokers to delete your record, but first, you have to find them, fill out their forms, and circle back every few months when your info pops up again. Fun, right? This particular hassle opened the door for data removal services like Delete Me and Incogni, companies that claim they'll track down the brokers and wipe your data for you. But are those claims actually true? Incogni and Delete Me Step in as paid proxies for the fight you'd rather skip. After you hand them basic details such as name, address, a few past phone numbers, they fire opt-out letters to dozens of data brokers in one swoop. Incogni reruns this sweep every few weeks, while Delete Me issues a status report every quarter. The subscription fee, somewhere between $7 and $25 a month, buys you time rather than magic. Under the hood, both services lean on the same legal levers you could pull yourself state privacy laws, broker-specific opt-out forms, and the simple threat of bad press. Automating that paperwork at scale is valuable, but not foolproof. Incogni's automation means those follow-up requests keep cycling without extra clicks from you, something Delete Me still handles in scheduled batches. Some brokers ignore requests until a lawyer follows up, others purge today and respawn your record until next quarter when they buy a new list from a different source. Coverage is another catch. Incogni focuses mainly on US and EU brokers and admits it can't touch social networks, core databases, or random blog posts. Delete Me casts a wider net, but still misses niche brokers that pop up overnight. And because Incogni is owned by Surfshark, a VPN company, its parent brand quietly nudges you towards yet another subscription, blurring the line between privacy tool and marketing upsell. So yes, these middlemen can lighten the load, they just can't promise a spotless slate. But why is it so hard to delete everything about you? Erasing your digital footprint runs into the internet's core feature. Everything is endlessly copied and backed up. First, every broker keeps backups. When Delete Me or Incogni win a deletion, that record may still lurk in an archive drive or a cold database copy. If the broker re-imports a fresh list next quarter, your name rides back in the new batch. Erasure becomes an endless whack-a-mole. Second, property deeds, voter roles, core filings, anyone can scrape them, and no privacy service can claw them back. Brokers simply point to the law and repost. Your home sale and country records is a permanent postcard to the internet. Third, 
The web itself catches your past, search engines hold snapshots, the Wayback Machine stores old versions, and AI models train on massive text dumps that rarely get purged. Even if the source page vanishes, echoes of it live on in indexes and datasets far beyond any opt-out form, so the promise isn't total erasure, it's risk reduction. A good service can bulldoze the easy targets and make you harder to profile, but the last crumbs will likely survive. Sparkling reminders that the internet never truly forgets. Where you live can make or break a deletion request. In California, the CCPA forces brokers to provide a do not sell my info button and to delete data on demand. Incogni and delete me lean hard on that law. It gives their takedown letters real bite. If you're outside California, the landscape is patchy. A few states such as Colorado, Virginia, and Utah offer lighter versions of the same rights, but many don't. Brokers in those states can shrug, say not required, and keep your records on the shelf. The result of that, two people paying the same subscription can see very different success rates. Even inside California, the law stops at state lines. A broker can honor your request, then rebuy your data from a vendor in New York and argue that the transaction happened elsewhere. Add in federal gaps and overlapping rules, and you get a loophole maze that deletion services can't always navigate. So location matters. In a strong privacy state, a takedown letter sounds like a legal threat. Elsewhere, it's more of a polite suggestion. That difference may decide whether your data disappears for months or reappears by the next billing cycle. Your zip code isn't the only fine print. Right after the deletion pitch, the same companies wave a VPN banner and promise total privacy. Incogni, for instance, is owned by Surfshark. The lead me's parent, Abine, sells an email masking tool and dabbles in VPN reselling. The upsell feels seamless. Pay once, fix everything. But the reality is messier. A VPN encrypts the path between your device and websites you visit, hiding your IP address from coffee shop Wi-Fi snoops and ad trackers that watch network traffic. Useful? Yes. Yet it does nothing to erase the data you left behind yesterday. Nothing to block loyalty card swipes tomorrow. And nothing to stop a broker from buying your profile in bulk. The VPN logo simply adds a layer of marketing comfort. While it is a necessary privacy tool we recommend using, it doesn't make you anonymous with the click of a button. That comfort is what critics call privacy theater. Slick dashboards, green shield icons, and countdown timers that say threats blocked without touching the deeper problem of how data is collected, stored, and resold. You walk away feeling armored while the brokers keep trading your purchase history, like baseball cards. So a VPN is a solid tool for keeping Wi-Fi lurkers out of your business, and data removal services shave off some exposure, but bundling them together doesn't equal invisibility. It's closer to wearing sunglasses at noon. You still cast a shadow, just a slightly cooler one. So is a subscription to the lead me or incogni worth the cash? It depends on the balance between risk, time, and expectation. If your job puts a target on your back, for example journalist, activist, or public-facing executive, the service can be a decent layer of insurance. Outsourcing the paperwork frees hours you'd otherwise spend hunting brokers, and regular sweeps catch new listings you'd miss. With Incogni, those sweeps run in the background. No forums, no reminders. So the time-saved ROI is even higher. At $7 to $25 a month, that trade-off can pencil out if a stray address online could mean real danger or harassment. For the average user, the payoff skews softer, less junk mail, fewer telemarketing calls, and a lighter mental load from knowing someone is mopping up behind you. Those wins are hard to price, but many subscribers say the quarterly records removed report alone lowers their anxiety. Think of it as paying for peace of mind, not for pristine slate. On the other hand, if you're patient and willing to DIY, the same opt-out laws are free to use. A weekend of form filing plus a calendar reminder every few months can match much of what these services do. The real gap is persistence. Brokers repopulate lists and deletion letters must keep pace. Miss a cycle and your file quietly returns. So is it actually worth your time and hassle? Finally, remember the limits you heard. Legal public records stay public. Location matters and sub-brokers ignore requests until lawyers bark. If those caveats 
feel like deal breakers, the ROI shrinks fast. But if shaving off the easy data and outsourcing the slog sounds worth a small monthly fee, incogme or delete me, earn its keep, not as force field, but as a janitor who makes the mess a little smaller. Erase services help, but real control comes from habits you run every day. Here's a short, high-impact playbook. Vote with your wallet, close that data-hungry Gmail tab, and move to privacy-first emails like ProtonMail or Start Email. Next, stop oversharing, lock your social accounts, trim friend lists, and post from a pseudonym when you can. Armor the browser, install Ubalock Origin, Privacy Badger, or similar add-ons to cut trackers before they load. Skip the smart hype. A fridge that DMs you isn't worth the trade-off of microphone, camera, and telemetry pings. Pressure the rule makers. Call or email lawmakers and ask why a music app needs 90 data sharing partners to stream one Beyonce song. None of these moves require subscriptions. Just a little time and steady follow through. Combine them with a data removal service and you'll shrink the target brokers aim at while sending a signal that privacy is worth more than convenience. You can't entirely delete yourself from the internet, but you can make it a little harder for the villains to win. Incogni and Delete Me aren't a total solution. They're a patch on a sinking ship. But if you're tired of data brokers treating you like Black Friday merchandise, they're a good start. You'll find links to both services in the description if you want to see how they work for you. If you found this video useful, hit like and subscribe and drop a comment before this video is used to target you with privacy tool ads. Oh, the irony.